Good morning, everybody. How we doing? All right, it's a media crowd. Okay, uh, we are very excited that you guys have joined us. Over the past few years, the UFC has been working with the best designers, engineers, and athletes to introduce a new revolutionary mixed martial arts glove. This, we believe, will take the entire sport of MMA to a new level. That is what we are here to reveal today, and we'll bring up Duncan French in a few moments. But before we get the details, we have a video that we'd like to show you to uh, get into the process of how this glove was created. Things have changed, so mouth guards have improved, fight shorts have improved, but the glove is the one thing that has been stagnant for a while. There's a pretty interesting history with the glove, and it actually goes back to UFC 1 and Art Jemerson when he walked in with a singular boxing glove. That glove is really working against Art because he can't grab. When UFC started, gloves were optional. Here they go. Look at that. The looks totally in control. I'm feeling very confident right now. Melton Bowen was the first person to feature what we now recognize as the modern day MMA fingerless glove at UFC 4. The only thing he's done different from former boxers is that he's wearing gloves that allow him to grab. The gloves became mandatory at UFC 14 in 1997. Awana was the first official glove. Technology at the time was very different for the Awana gloves. Thick stitching, thinner leather, thinner padding, poor quality seams. And then that evolved into the glove design that we have now. Diaco and Century made those gloves. That's been around for well over 10 years. Technology has advanced. So looking at the glove, we were looking at everything from the standpoint of where are we and where do we want to be? So can we reduce eye pokes? Can we reduce hand breaks? Can we reduce lacerations and cuts, make it more comfortable for the athlete? So there was a set of goals going into this glove redesign. When we started looking for partners, we wanted someone who was not going to be buried in their preconceived notions of what the glove should be, but would look at it with an open mind and say, what are the science and data telling us? What is the engineering offer to the glove? We knew we needed to find the right company to work with us on this project, and we ended up selecting Vices. Vices is a company that was founded basically to make a difference in football by really looking at out-of-the-box thinking on how we could better protect head injuries. This team in Seattle is focused on impact mitigation for football helmets and shoulder pads, and now actually even into baseball protection. UFC came to us with an approach of really looking at a glove really at a start over point, not trying to evolve the glove they have, but really looking at what would be the best glove for their sport and uh, how we can improve it. The current glove that they were using, basically just a chunk of foam, a solid piece, wasn't really developed as a impact mitigation type of foam. It was just more or less a certain density that seemed to work well for fighting. The limitation there is, you know, one, how in which it absorbs impact, but also its rigidity. And that was one of the, probably the major parts of the glove was that rigidity wouldn't allow you to easily open and close your hand. And therefore you, you could have eye pokes or other just difficulty during fighting. So what we developed was a multi-layer slip plane system that allowed us to continue to mitigate those impacts, but allow those slip layers to slide on each other in use without ever minimizing the actual offset between your hand and the outer edge of the glove. It's a back and forth process with them to get even to a first sample. So does this technically work? Does this pass testing? What kind of foam do you put in the foam stack and why? And so that back and forth went on for quite a while. It wasn't until we got a first sample that then we started looking at it on hands. We want to be able to test the glove in reasonable velocities and forces that it's actually experienced in a fight. I can bend my fists wonderfully and being able to close properly means that I can get my grapple. They're so comfortable, really. I mean, compared to the other gloves, one of the biggest differences is like, they already feel rounded. Like, uh, the other gloves felt a bit stiff. 
we actually, with the UFC, worked with fighters, actually had them impact load cells and high pressure systems to basically bring that back to our lab and correlate that here. Once we felt like we had passed the laboratory tests that we wanted to pass, we had passed the feedback that we had gotten from the actual UFC team. That's, yeah, that's a lot better than being stretched out. We were now able to actually put together samples with the factory that could actually be used in a real fight. We were comfortable that we had a glove that functioned, fit, and did what we wanted to do. We then moved into testing with Contender Series. This is the world's most exciting job interview. It is Dana White's Contender Series. We used 10 weeks of Contender Series to have all athletes fight in the glove. They gave feedback post-fight. Overall, coaches, athletes all had great things to say. So that we were able to then use that to make any final refinements to the glove. The final product is something that we're extremely excited about. It is a glove that is really going to revolutionize the MMA fight glove space. Some of the changes you're gonna see on the new glove are there are zero seams around the hand. All of the seams are on the inside, so there's no place for a laceration to occur from a seam. The padding in the back of the hand has been broken into two, and essentially the first pad and that break allow for the hand to have this movement, while the new layering technology and the main pad allows for the hands to move and be flexible. The layering system inside, foams are different foams. They allow for impact dispersion so that you're not getting as much impact in a singular spot on the knuckle. So you're seeing more uh, distribution of the strike across the hand. There's pads that are on the bone on the outside of either side of the hand. The new wristband is a curved ergonomic wristband, so it actually cinches down to the wrist. There's no more room to put your hand down in the actual glove. And then it's a cross-function cinch, so it also allows for that tight custom fit to be exactly how the fighter wants around their wrist and provides some wrist support. The finger holes used to be cut straight across the finger. We've now cut that down at an angle so that there's no bulk under the finger, which is allowing you to close your hands and not fight against the leather in the hand. Cool feature of the new glove is that the primary glove has gone from black to gunmetal metallic color. And then we have broken that out into multiple colors depending on what we're using it for. The gun medal, that is the primary that will be in the octagon for all fights except for championship rounds. And in championship rounds, there's a brand new gold glove. That gold glove has a slight octagon pattern in it and so elevated and premium for the championship rounds. There's also a tough glove, a Dana White Contender Series glove, and then a red glove for things like Road to UFC. What we wanted to do with this was create a journey for the athlete. So you might start in the red glove, you might start in the contender series glove, but until you make it to the UFC, you're not wearing the UFC glove. As subtle as it may seem to some, there is a lot that has changed in this glove to improve it for the athletes and make it more comfortable function for them. So really, really excited about this. Awesome, we are excited indeed. Great job by our production team to put that together. and. Uh more to explain that and just to clarify championship fights for the gold glove she mentioned championship rounds she meant for all five rounds of championship fights we're going to bring out the senior vice president of the ufc performance institute duncan french he of course is uh at the forefront of mma technology uh anything involving our ufc athletes to the highest level and uh he'll explain a little bit more about this exciting announcement that's been a project that's taken more than five years to complete. So we're very excited to make this announcement today. It's been uh, quite a road, Duncan, hasn't it? Absolutely, it's been uh, very exciting. And um, you know, th there's been many contributors across the UFC ecosystem that have been involved in this project from its inception many years ago. Um, and it's great to get to today where we're launching the new gloves. So tell uh, a little bit of, about what you do uh, for the UFC Performance Institute. Yeah, so I'm the senior vice president of the Performance Institute. Um, as many in the room are aware, that's kind of the, the, the high performance service infrastructure. Um, we support the, the athletes with a variety of different services, everything from sports science applications through to nutrition. It's been a busy day for weight cuts yeah. today. 
um, and medical services. And then we get brought into obviously supporting projects that have been um, you know led by other departments within the UFC here. You know, Ember talking in the commercial products group um, about you know exciting things like glove and equipment yeah. and. Um, you know, ultimately, the Performance Institute interacts with the athletes on a daily basis. Um, we aggregate information and data, and we've been able to do that in this project as well. And something that was mentioned is that uh, the technology has changed so much, and so much has evolved in this sport, but the glove really hadn't for the UFC. What is your excitement level at what this brings for the athletes that you work with? Yeah, I mean, as, as you saw in the video, the, you know, the UFC's had evolutions in many aspects of its operation from, you know, the Octagon to the Fightwear to the Performance Institute to, you know, the way that we produce the shows. And the one thing that's really been static for, uh, you know, 11, 10, 11, 12 years is, is the one critical component of the sport, and that's the glove. So, um, you know, to, to go down this route of, of, of redesign and redevelopment, I think it's critical. Um, you know, using our partners in, in, in Vices and Diaco and VeChain that we can talk to here momentarily as well, um, they've all been intimately involved in this process. So it's really been uh, a collaboration of many minds coming together for, you know, the health and safety of our athletes. They're the, the, the asset of the UFC that we have and, um, you know, we want to do everything to protect them and support them and, and put them in a, uh, a health and safe environment. Um, but also we've done that by bring in you know, new technology and, and, and new information and new, um, you know, new design to the gloves. So. so when you think about these gloves and when you explain it, how, what are the, the cool features that you're excited about that really benefits the athletes? Yeah, the, there's really so many, um, and, and it, it seems very subtle, but there, there are lots of aspects to it. Not, not only is the glove lighter, um, we've moved to a, a universal unisex um, sizing approach, um, so there's no longer female and male gloves, it's, it's a, a unisex sizing. So, you know, we hope that that will have a, a better form um, with it, within the, the glove itself. Um, then you move to kind of the function and the performance of the glove, and there's so many cool aspects to that. You know, Ember spoke about the, you know, the, the, the padding and the slip planes and, um, you know, the contour features that will uh, mold to the athlete's knuckles and their hand more adequately. Um, you know, through to you know new technologies like I mentioned, V Chain, and um, you know we've we're putting chips into the uh, into the glove now so that we can actually authenticate every single glove as well. So whether it's manufacturing, the design, the technology, uh, the you know the, the new age um, you know materials that have gone into the glove, it's it's very very exciting. Can you explain more about the chip technology? So to authenticate the glove, from what I understand, is that each glove will almost be registered, and you'll be able to tell which bout they were used for. Is there more to the chip technology um, than the, just the authentication part? Absolutely, you've nailed it. There is no kind of um, you know diagnostic part related to the chip. It's very much an authentication piece. What that means is that um, any athlete that goes into the octagon, as soon as they put their gloves on, um, we can authenticate that glove. We can record that athlete against that bout. Um, and when they leave the octagon, um, when, you know, if a fan wants to purchase or secure those gloves, at any point in that process, we can authenticate the glove um, and ensure that it is you know, a title glove and who wore it, whatever that may be. And coming to work at the UFC Performance Institute each day, uh, while the athletes were testing them out in the Contender Series last uh, season, which I didn't even know that we were uh, you know, kind of covertly right. testing out this glove on Dana White's Contender Series. Can you go through some of the functions of the glove, the, the seams on the inside and the different uh, functions for fighters that will benefit them? Yeah, absolutely, and that, that's been the beauty of the Performance Institute through this process. We, we've taken the, the testimonials and the guidance of the athletes all the way through. Um, every step of the way, whether it was the evaluation and the interrogation of the old glove um, to understand its pros and cons and how we've used that information um, to then obviously direct the ideation of the new glove, um, the athletes have been engaged throughout that whole process. Um, you know, there's some really unique features. Um, I think the, you know, the impact pad system, which allows the flexion of the hand to fall into a more uh, natural position. I mean, the, the talk around, um, you know, eye pokes is obviously 
very topical and current, and nobody wants to see eye pokes in our bouts, you know? Um, it really disrupts the, the cadence of the production. Um, but the old glove really had quite stiff foam, which held the hand in a very rigid position. So as athletes were trying to close their fists throughout a fight, that would fatigue their hand um, and ultimately return this to the position where the, the fingers were outward facing. The new technology that um, the, the vices have brought to the table with our slip planes um, allows the, the hand to sit in a much, much more natural position so the fingers now are no longer kind of facing forwards um, we've got protect protection on both sides of the the glove now that was not previously there so whether it's those hammer fists or those heavy you know overhand punches that potentially will impact you know second or fifth metacarpals you know we've now got protection around those um, the strapping on the wrist um, you know the, the 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 nature in which that will now have a much more secure and tight fit to the athlete's hand mitigating any uh, ability of opponents to, to get their fingers inside there, which we, we see, you know, people are tactical in what they're trying to do. So yeah, we've, all, we've, we've tried to think about every aspect of the sport, um, but the key thing which we, we ultimately wanted to do was not change the sport in any way, shape or form. We didn't want to see, you know, sudden spikes in knockouts or things that would reflect, hey, yeah, we've got a new glove, but th it's totally changed the nature of the sport. That's been critical to the, um, to the design brief from day one. We don't want to change the nature of the sport, but we absolutely want to enhance the, the form, the fit, and the performance of the glove for the athletes. What do you think will change when we do watch? If you don't want to like change the sport or add to the knockouts or anything like that, uh, how do you expect the fights to maybe go a bit differently because of the improvement in the glove? Well, listen, everyone's ambition is to, you know, ensure that we reduce, you know, hand breaks or, or, or fractures of the, the, you know, the bones within the hand. Um, everyone is trying to seek a way to, you know, reduce or mitigate eye pokes. Um, you know, the nature of an MMA glove where your fingers are exposed, we, we're never going to be able to take away or completely eradicate eye pokes. Um, but ultimately, what we want to see is reducing that significantly, and we hope that that will be the case with the, the way in which the new glove sits. We do have some samples. It looks like we're being, uh, oh, well, they're being passed around out here so you guys can kind of check it out for yourself. What was the decision process in redesigning the glove? I mean, it, it, it starts at the top with Dana um, and everybody else, but ultimately, you know, when um, Ember and, and Tracy's team in commercial products who work with the equipment teams and the, the um, you know, the, the cut men that are doing the hand wraps, you know, that there was just a recognition that there's not been an evolution. Um, there's not been an evolution in this this critical part of our sport. Um, and I think that pollinated the momentum around, okay, can we explore the opportunity to, to build into a new, um, a new glove launch? And what's it like for you, this process that's taken more than five years to be involved in? I mean, listen, I geek out on this stuff. You know, I'm a, I'm a scientist, right? So, um, you know, where we take, you know, data and information and, and scientific application and really put it into a, you know, a, a, a tool that is used in a very applied fashion, um, you know, I, I love that. And I think, you know, we've, we've been very thorough in our approach here. Um, we've, we've lent on some critical partners in Vices um, that have done all the R&D and the evaluation um, and the ideation and design. Um, we've obviously aligned with our current uh, manufacturers in Diaco to bring this design concept to life. So, um, you know, along the way, whether it's the, you know, Dr. Davidson and the medical team um, and their input, whether it's the Performance Institute and the athletes, or whether it's you know, our partners that we lean on so importantly, um, you know, this five-year journey has been, been exceptional, and I think we've arrived at a really, really good place. We saw Vanessa Demopoulos in the video and Julian Arosa giving their thoughts. What has been the consensus thought um, that fighters keep bringing back to you in terms of feedback as they've tested it at the PI? Um, yeah, the, the overwhelming one has always been how mobile and flexible it is and how they can get dexterity in their hands. Um, and, and I think that's, been, you, you heard Deme uh, Vanessa, excuse me, on the, on the video talk about, you know, I can, I can grapple, I can grab, I can, it's easy for me to, my, to close my fist and clench. Um, and, and that's been by design. Um, and I think that's been an overwhelming positive that the athletes have, have reported is just the dexterity of the glove. Um, I think they like the design features, as I say, the, the reduction in um, you know, the seams and, and the removal of some of the stitching. So we, we're minimizing and mitigating those abrasions and cuts, hopefully. And also, you know, when they're hitting the bags, 
the, the, the feel and the, the, the reporting, you know, the, the, the sensation of, of force you know, application and how it feels in the comfort in the glove um, was all very rewarding to us as the, the, you know, the team developing it. And then anything that we learned after they were in actual competition at Dana White's Contender Series, not just in the training room? Yeah, so I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're all excited that, um, you know, it wasn't, you know, identified that in, in Series 7 of content that we were actually trialing the new glove. But um, again, that was a huge success. And I think, um, you know, that information from those hundred or so fighters that were in Series 7, we've been able to take that data and that information, compare it to the previous contender series, um, you know, performance metrics, be that knockouts, finishes, you know, those characteristics that you would think would be impacted or related to the glove and the nature of the glove. Um, they've all been very static, which is ultimately want to, what we wanted to see. So Series 7 versus the other series, no, no difference in the performance metrics, even though the fighters were wearing a new glove. So, you know, big check in that box. As I say, we didn't want to change the nature of the sport. Um, but the athletes coming out of contender in, 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 in Series 7, again, were reporting, you know, it, listen, it takes a little bit of time for people to you know, feel a new, a, a new tool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's obviously a behavioral change and figuring it out and what's the differences, but overwhelmingly positive um, across the board. And then uh, we'll open it up for questions in just a moment. But first, uh, the last question for me, when are we going to see these new gloves inside the octagon for the first time? Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously today we're excited to launch the glove. Um, the glove will be worn in live combat in the UFC at Newark for UFC 302 um, on June 1st. There so we what we will be doing starting tomorrow um, with the athletes that are on that Newark card, they will be receiving um, you know, the, the new glove to essentially practice in the glove for the next two months going into Newark. All right, and that's when fans will be able to purchase those as well. My friend Tracy just told me that in the lead up to UFC 302 in Newark. Does uh, any of our media friends have any questions for Duncan French? Jose? I got one. Um, I'm sorry, apologies if you already answered this, but um, I, on the sheet we got, I noticed that uh, it's, a one, it's like a one and a half pound difference from the current gloves, so, or ounces, I should say. So I guess what one into the thought to kind of reduce the weight of these gloves? Well, the reduction in weight was, was kind of a, a, a two-part two response to your question. Ultimately, what we found in the interrogation of the old glove, that there was a lot of excess material, um, whether that was underneath the fingers that, again, restricted the ability to make a fist and clinch, or whether that was kind of on some of the exterior parts around the palm. So by being able to take away material, being able to take away the extra leather, we've also been able to reduce the, the weight, okay? Um, but ultimately, we wanted a much more streamlined fit and a much more form fit. Um, and, you know, we're now working with impact molded foam rather than hand cut foam. Um, so we have much more consistency across all of our sizing. So when athletes are coming to use the glove, yes, the reduction in weight is related to our ability to redesign and remove some of the, uh, the fat off the bone a little bit. Kind of going off of that, it also says it's going to be between three and 4.9 ounces rather than just four across the board. Is that just because of the size of? Correct. Yeah. I mean, listen, we've got a, uh, I think a 4XS through to a 3XL. So, you know, by nature, it's just a bigger hand. We have to use more material. But, it, uh, you know, the, the difference between the actual weights from the smallest to the largest size has also been reduced on that delta. So that's a, another important point to make. You mentioned... Uh, the data from kind of field testing it in the contender series, did you see a decrease in eye pokes? So eye pokes is an interesting one in as much as, um, you know, recently we've, we've seen a lot of eye pokes. There's about 36 eye pokes uh, on a yearly basis on average since 2019 in the UFC. Um, an eye poke happens about every 14 fights. Um, and the average duration of a, of a stoppage for an eye poke is about 50 seconds. Um, but that can be up to five minutes, as we well know, and about can be finished. So eye pokes are a, are a very interesting topic. When we've looked at the information, and again, leaning on our colleagues with, within UFC stats and 3027 that, that you know, record all this information for us, um, the, the information around eye pokes from series uh, one through six of the contender was significantly greater than series seven. So we actually saw a, a, a reduction in eye pokes in that seventh series when we were wearing the glove. Now, again, we hope that that is a consequence of the redesign and the nature of the glove, um, but we're all watching moving forwards to ensure that this is going to be the case. 
you mentioned kind of wanting to see a static result from some of the other uh, comparisons. Uh, I'm curious, like, what would it have looked like? Would you have seen like a, an increase in knockouts or a decrease in knockouts? Would you have seen that as an indication? Correct. Yeah. I mean, if if we change the nature of a foam um, or the construct of a glove, um, and now that glove is impacting an athlete, um, you know, the last thing we would want to see is a huge spike or an elevation in knockouts that are consequent to the way we've redesigned the materials in the glove. So that's actually a very tricky um, design brief that we gave to Vices in as much as we don't want anything in the sport to change regarding finishes or stoppages or knockouts, but we really want to improve you know, the, the safety um, in as much as can we distribute the pressure of the, the forces across the hand in a different way? Um, can we reduce the cuts and abrasions as I spoke to? So um, yes, there were certain performance metrics that we just wanted to be static because at the end of the day, MMA is MMA and we don't really want to change that in any way, shape or form by ultimately changing the tool that is involved within the fight. Actually, I have one more. Uh, how, if at all, will this affect uh, hand wraps like before the fights? Yeah, I mean, as I've mentioned, it's more of a, a, a streamline and low profile um, glove. It fits the athlete's hands much more accurately. So there will be a small adaptation to the hand wraps. And again, we're connected with all the cut men to do that. The cut men have been, you know, a number of the cut men have been involved intimately throughout this whole process. So, you know, what we're expecting is that the need for a, a excessive amounts of taping and hand wraps um, will, will be reduced somewhat because the fit um, of the glove will be much, uh, much more accurate. Any other questions? Oh, Alex, go ahead. Uh, what's the red glove being used for? So the red glove is for events like uh, the road to the UFC in Asia, or if we have other um, UFC assets that come online, we would potentially use the red glove for that. Thank you. Anybody else? Duncan French, great job. Thank you very much. Great job, Ember, on the video. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for joining us for this uh, exciting time. UFC 302 in Newark. We'll see these new gloves in action. Have a great weekend.